Hello, everyone. This is Ted Check, Public Relations Manager for the International Foundation for Protection Officers. I'm here with Matt Parker. Uh, he's been uh, gracious enough to join us tonight for a special look at uh, a video that's been making the rounds. Uh, but before we get to that, um, to, to, uh, to talk about Matt, he is a uh, 20 years, uh, 20 plus year veteran of the U.S. Army. And also he is the, uh, the founder and uh, CEO of uh, ISA, Independent Security Advisors. So he is, uh, and that, that company specializes in executive and dignitary protection, uh, both the practice of it and also uh, training. So they're constantly uh, bringing uh, fresh new folks, uh, training them up the right way and bringing them into the fold. So that's, that's always great to hear. And uh, Matt, the other thing that, that people need to know about you is that you are a graduate and also an instructor of Tony Scotty's VDI, which stands for Vehicle Dynamics Institute. So they teach um, the driving that we're going to see in this video. Uh, the, as, as some people like to say, the, uh, the, the Jason Bourne-like moves uh, that, that we're gonna see. So yeah, it's, it's the video that I think a lot of people have seen uh, the guy's name is um, Leo Prinsloo. Uh, it takes place in South Africa, and it was a, uh, a robbery attempt. And through uh, Leo's um, amazing driving skills, he was able to uh, to foil uh, these guys, the the, the would-be robbers. And that that's what that's what prompted folks to call him, uh, you know, real life Jason Bourne. And a little bit more about him, uh, the guy I, I was. Did a little checking and uh, served with the South African Police Special Forces for a dozen years. He now teaches uh, the military there in, in South Africa how to shoot. Uh, so the guy, the guy, you know, not only can he do the driving, he can do the shooting. And, and I love his line. Uh, you, you probably heard this too, Matt. Uh, Unfortunately, I did not have a chance to return fire. I, that's a warrior right there. So yeah, let's. Uh, so how you doing, Matt? By the way, I'm doing well, thanks. You sound great. Yeah, awesome. And and yeah, really appreciate you uh, uh, taking a look at this with me because you know I I figured no better person than you to describe what what we're going to see. So uh, if I can uh, share the screen here and uh, go to this. Click share. Okay, so this is the I I believe this is the new footage that's that's been released because he had a, he had a camera facing in, and then he had it he had a camera facing out. This is a shorter clip, but uh, yeah, let's let's roll it here and and see what we see. So let me just stop it for a sec, Matt. So that that white truck, we see that white truck again. It, it, do you believe that that white truck is is also involved in this? Well, the vehicle they found abandoned was an Audi uh, A4. It's possible that truck was a lead or was a pace or was doing surveillance. Uh, but as of right now, the only vehicle they've recovered is the Audi. But it's possible. Right, because we see that again. There's an impact with that with that uh, that truck. Um, so I, 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 you know, that that's where I, I thought. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder if that was involved. But anyway, let's let's take a little. Uh, see if the volume can pump that up just a little bit. So he, if I can stop it again, Matt. So he looks over his shoulder and that's that's the Audi that we see there. Right, you can right see the car off his shoulder and they're putting rounds in the side of the vehicle attempting to stop him. And you notice his very first maneuver once he sees the car is to steer the mass of the vehicle into the other car. So what he does is he forces that other car to slam on its brakes or he would put him into that concrete barrier. Okay. So he put the, you know, the bad guys immediately on the defense. Nice, nice. So, so this, this right here looks like a minivan. This is not the vehicle that we're talking about. No, we're looking at that car off his, uh, his right shoulder. Okay. So that, so is it behind, it must be behind this, this minivan then, I guess. 
from the film, I'd say that's about right. Or unless he's, uh, or unless it's on this side, is it? Is it over on the other side? Well, no, they drive from. I'm looking at how the that gunfire is coming in. That's mm -hmm. that's right in the window. So yeah. I say the angle is it's coming from that car. Okay. All right. So let's let's play a little bit more here. So he he's telling uh, the guy who's riding shotgun uh, to to uh, to rack the the slide on that uh, I think it was an AR. Yeah, he turns to his his sidekick there. He says, "Ready the, you know, ready the long rifle, ready your pistol." And you he does it so calmly that yeah, you know, his sidekick there's only been on the job four days. Oh, is that right? That I didn't know. Yeah, because yeah, he's only he, been on the job four days. I mean, he, he looked, uh, well, it looked pretty scared. <laughs> he, he's a little disoriented. He, you can tell there's a little bit of shock. And the way that, you know, he looks over and just says, this is what I want you to do. And just watches him do it. I mean, he's so calm about it. He reassures his, you know, his shotgun there. Yeah. All right. Let's play a little more. So yeah, what's what's going on here? What can you tell tell us, Matt, about what's going on? You got this box truck, you got people running, and then here's that what I think is that same white pickup truck again. Right. Well, from the reports, I haven't read anything about those two other vehicles. That's not to say they're not involved. It's not to say uh, you know they didn't attempt to stop him. Mm -hmm. But without more facts or seeing more of the report. It's just conjecture at this point. But it's, I cannot see them trying to stop an armored truck with just a car. It just doesn't make any sense. So so, so, so it's possible that there was some additional uh, organization, you know, additional uh, um, associates involved. Oh, I think it's absolutely likely. I mean, you're, you're taking on an armored car you're driving a car, I think you would want something with a little bit more mass to assist you in slowing them down. Right. So it's possible those vehicles are involved. Again, I haven't seen more in the report. Maybe we'll see more in the video. Okay. And and uh, so, yeah, so if this is, in fact, the same truck and you know people are getting out, he, he does uh, something interesting here. Kind of uh, threading the eye of the needle, if you will. Well, he drives between the two. You see people that are on foot. I don't know if they're bailing out because uh, they heard the gunfire. Again, haven't read the report. All I have is this film. Uh, but the way he goes through there, if there's somebody following him, they have a choice. They can try to follow him through those two vehicles and possibly lose control. Or they can go around to the outside and he gets a little bit more distance. Either way, those other vehicles shield him from additional gunfire. Gotcha. And there, there was the impact with that truck. It... The way that truck is coming up on him and the way he's driving, I would say he's not exactly in 100% control of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's getting in a little loose and he's trying to get back under control. That impact could have been intentional, uh, but considering the way that truck keeps going, I mean, he hits it and it keeps going, I I'd have to see more. Mm. All right. Well, let's let's look at the um, at the other view. Let's see if this will cooperate here. What do you know? So just uh, just another day at the office. Um, well, until that. Um, you know, it looks like as soon as those rounds impact. 
He moves in such a way to place the other vehicle on defense. And he shields the driver's side of the vehicle. Meaning, it looks like he puts the vehicle up against on the median. Mm -hmm. Shielding himself. Because quite honestly, the fastest way to stop an armored vehicle is to kill the driver, not shoot the vehicle. Makes sense, makes sense. So by moving to the median, he shields himself and puts the assailant on the defense. And I like how he does it. It's muscle memory. It's ingrained in him. Go into the threat and drive the threat back. And and that that could have been what they were trying to do, that what they were attempting to do. I mean, they, look at the... Uh... The impact there, right on the window, you know. Um, wh what do you think? Is that what they were trying to do? They're trying, trying to, trying to uh, take take him out. I think they knew the window was armored. Hmm. I think that was an attention getter. It was a warning that you know we're engaging your vehicle, and you should stop. I don't think they had a realistic expectation they were going to penetrate the glass. Ah, okay. I think they were hoping they would get the driver to panic uh, so they could continue with the robbery, maybe force them to stop out of fear, give up the truck. You know, maybe uh, my life is worth more than what's in the truck. I should just give up. Uh, they just picked the wrong guy. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this, he's got the skills for sure. So yeah, his his sidekick uh, was was messing around with maybe like a nine or something, and he's like, take the long gun, huh? Well, again, you can see the shotgun. You look at his face. He's thinking, this is my fourth day on the job. His hands are in front of him. He's holding the weapon he was given by his partner. He really hasn't made any adjustments. He's just going for the ride. I mean. He doesn't have any muscle memory yet. There's nothing for him to fall back on. Uh, from what I read, he's had three days of training with Leo, and that was it. Wow. So this kid is just operating on instructions he's being given. So he, he was learning on the job. He didn't have anything prior to uh, to getting out there uh, on the street, so to speak. He, he, didn't, he didn't have, you know, several weeks at least or anything like that, huh? Nothing in any of the reports. There's no biography, no information about him that I've seen. Uh, I just read a statement that he says, I've been on the job four days. I trained with Leo for three. And, uh, you know, because he was so calm, I was able to stay calm. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, clearly uh, Leo was, was doing his best to, to, you know, speak to him and, and with an even tone and, and, um, yeah, to keep, you know, to keep his uh, his apprehension at bay. Right. That was where they went between the two vehicles, right? He makes the swerve between the vehicles, but you can see when he comes out of it, by the way, he's fighting with the wheel there a bit. And there was the impact uh, with the, uh, with body the language. Yeah, you can you can see he gets through okay, but he's trying to drive by mirror. He's trying to find, you know, where the assailant is, and you can see where that truck gets away from him just a little bit. So the question is, was the impact on that truck intentional, or did he just lose it a little bit? But either way. He recovers nicely, he keeps the acceleration, and he keeps calm. Because it's, it's very difficult once, once you start in a, I think they call it a yaw, when, when, you, when you start to, to move in a way that, you know, um, I guess a swerve or whatever, a lot of people tend to, to uh, overcorrect, right? When the energy in the vehicle 
you know, laterally, when that energy exceeds what the vehicle can compensate between the tires, the suspension, the braking, the steering, when you exceed the capabilities of the vehicle, you're going to get that. I mean, you'll get that swerving. What I like is he's not fighting the truck. He's riding the truck. He's letting the momentum continue. And he's letting the momentum and the energy balance out. Because if he tries to overcorrect, maybe you lose control of the truck. Yeah. It looks like what he does is he gets off the gas just a bit, lets the energy balance out. And at the same time, he still has situational awareness. He's still looking at the cars around him. So I would say at, at worst, you know, driving by mirror, I mean, driving to know where the threat is, maybe that was just the split second where the back of the truck starts to come a little loose. But I love the way he gets control of it and he continues to drive. And he anticipated, he says that they're going to shoot. Um, so so he, he, uh, he could feel it coming. Well, one of the things he says is he pre-visualized what he was going to do. Now, when he says pre-visualize, I think of that as muscle memory. Mm -hmm. You're presented a situation, you're going to react a certain way. But he and said pre-visualize, which means if something happens, I see how I'm going to counter it. I see what my actions are going to be. It, it's similar. I mean, it's semantics. But it's really, it's well, it's well displayed here. It doesn't and, that, and that only comes with, with just practice upon practice upon practice. Am I right? Well, it's, it's repetition and muscle memory. It's put, being put in those situations in training where reacting becomes second nature. But more importantly, driving is a perishable skill. And you can't drive like this every day. Hmm. So there's an element of if you get into a situation and the adrenaline spikes, how fast does that training come back to you? Ah. And with him, he's had enough training, but he also has the mentality. He's got the mental mentality that says, don't panic. Use the skill sets that I have and let's ride this out. Okay. And that's key. That's key for any driver. If they're going to put you in, you know, a 2,000 or 3,000 pound vehicle, you've got to be able to see ahead. 30 seconds, 60 seconds a minute. You have to know where the vehicle is going to be. Especially if you're kind of looking out the mirrors at somebody shooting from behind. And, and right here, I think he's, he's telling uh, uh, his partner to call someone. So he's so he's he's using the you know the power of the you know they say that uh, I guess is the old saying something like you know criminals can't outrun the radio, uh, so so he's he's using technology to um, to call ahead to I guess maybe back up or I don't know if you know anything about that. This, this well, he right was here. calling he was calling a couple of members of his company, another part of his team. He was not calling law enforcement. Okay. Uh, because his team was, let's be honest, better trained, probably closer. Right. And there's an element of trust with your own people that they don't quite have with the police there. Hmm. The fact that his, his sidekick there, he's trying to text a message with his nerves and his adrenaline. Oh, that must be tough. I'm, I'm just wondering... Uh, you know, what the uh, the grammar folks would say if they read the message, because I'm sure it wasn't m the most grammarific message he's ever sent. Yeah, I mean, I guess in that situation, all you can hope for is to get your point across, um, you know, that, that, that people will understand you, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, I've, you know, heard stories and actually I, I've experienced a little bit of that. You know, when you're in a situation, I've not never been in a situation like this, but I, I, I fell down a ravine and I broke my ankle. And I, then when I got 911 on the phone, I couldn't remember where I was. 
uh, you know, so in these situations, um, that amazes me, you know, that, that that can happen. Well, this also keys on another point. Looking at the age of the young man, this is his generation. You know, thumbs and text messaging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This isn't going to be something strong for, say, you and I. I'm going to want to call somebody. I'm going to want to say, hey, I'm being shot at, and this is the location, and you need to come assist. These younger kids are able to text. And I'm looking at the young man now. I'm looking at his concentration. Mm -hmm. It's almost like he's sending a message. I'm going to be late for, you know, uh, I'm going to be late for dinner, honey. I'll see you in a few minutes. Mm. Yeah, because uh, uh, Leo, the driver, he said call. He used the word call, if, I, if I'm if I'm right. right. Uh, and then this guy, the young guy, immediately went to text him. Yeah, you're right. It's interesting. Let's let's see the uh, the end here. What's going on here, Matt? Do you know, are they going over like curbs or or berms or or something? Uh, seemed like a, there was a, some rough uh, terrain there. Well, they had gotten off the the N four and there were some side roads, and it looks like if you look at some of the after effects after the some of the images, mm -hmm. it looks like he might have gone into a parking lot where there were some speed bumps. Oh, okay. And he was going up and over them. So, so at this point, has he lost the uh, uh, the would-be robbers? Have have they, uh, you know, left the area? Well, from the reports, it says, you know, the vehicle. They don't know if it was stuck or disabled. Mm -hmm. I know in the video you can hear the transmission grinding pretty bad. But Leo grabs the weapon, gets out of the vehicle, right, right, to engage them. Uh, and they very correctly decided that was not a good decision, and they leave. Oh, okay. So he, so they were still on his tail at that point, when right here when he's getting out. That's what the the reports show. But uh, yeah, so so Matt, um, give us some some uh, final conclusions on uh, on all the the footage that we've seen of this incident. You know, when I sit down and I consider the video and what I've read afterwards, it really reinforces three things. One, whether you're moving somebody of high value or a item of you know worth, you need to do an assessment. And that assessment should be what's the threat? Who are the ones that want to get to that, that valuable item? What are their means and methods? And then come up with a proper counter for that. In this case, you've got an armored car, you know, especially designed for the transportation of, you know, valuables. Mm -hmm. You have a specially trained driver, former law enforcement, special forces. He has the right mental outlook because that's often overlooked. Mm, yeah. You can have all the training in the world. But if you're not mentally suitable, if you don't have the attributes where you stay calm, all that training doesn't do you any good. Right. And then finally, there's that spirit of, I'm going to use the vehicle until I can't use the vehicle anymore. Know what the capabilities are of the vehicle. It's bulletproof. Don't get out of the vehicle. If right. the vehicle can move, keep moving. And if that transmission got ground or he's stuck, whatever the case was, he now knows instead of being a bunker, take the fight to the bad guys. Mm. Yeah, and that takes that takes um, 
a lot of nerve. I mean, that that, that takes some serious serious uh, guts. I think it's also simply this: they've been they've been ramming you, they've been chasing you, they've been shooting at you. Mm. Your primary weapon, which is your vehicle, is no longer available to you. They've already shown their intent. You can't just sit in the vehicle and wait for your friends to come save you. Right. So you you grab the the next weapon you have, which is your long rifle. You've got the training for it. He's a he's an instructor. And you bring the fight to the bad guy. But you've got to have there has to be a uh, an element of calmness. You can't panic. Mm. You have to have this mental outlook that says, okay, the vehicle's disabled. I've got a rifle. Okay, the rifle's out of bullets. I've got a pistol. There's never an element of giving up. There was, you can never see in this man's face where he thinks, maybe I abandon the vehicle and let them have it. No, yeah, there's none of that. And um, whether it's, you know, driving for a diplomat or high net worth or celebrity, you've got to have in your mind, well, there's no quit. There's just the next solution. Wow, and he that's, did that's that. amazing. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's something. That's, that's very uh, admirable, you know, that. Pretty, pretty darn amazing. If you quit, if you say, well, if I just give them the vehicle, they'll go away. What are the chances they don't shoot you? Mm. And I think that's the other part of it. He intellectually just said to himself, I just can't walk away. They've gone this far. I have to keep fighting. Because if I don't, they're going to kill me or they're going to kill the young man I'm riding with. Yeah, yeah. So between his training and his never quit attitude, there's also a intellectual element of, well, I can't give up. There's a realistic estimate that says, I can't give up and this is why. It's, he's not being fatalistic. It's I've done everything I can do up till now. Why stop? Mm -hmm. And again, that's his training, his years of experience. And uh, I think this video is going to be shown in, you know, driving schools and security classes for years to come. Yeah, I think I think it. Uh, I mean, it, it, yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, there's a lot to be learned. You know, as, as you've uh, dissected it. And uh, it gives those who are interested or maybe think they're interested, kind of gives them a little taste, um, you know, and, and maybe, uh, you know, uh, uh, makes them question, you know, whether it really is for them or not, you know, because it isn't for everybody. Um, so uh, it might help in that regard as well, I think. The job isn't easy. It's boring. I mean, it's, it's mind numbing until it's not mm. and if i look at that young man and the look on his face i don't ever see the light come on and when you know leo jumps out to engage he doesn't climb out no that's true he i noticed that yeah and i don't know if it's because leo didn't say follow me mm -hmm. I think after four days on the job, he was sitting there thinking, what do I do now? Right. Like you said, no muscle memory, no, no, uh, nothing to fall back on. And that, no, that's I think you're right. You know, because we, go ahead, sorry. Well, in the United States, I mean, you have Loomis and Wells Fargo, and we have armored cars transporting money. We've got the corrections department transporting you know, prisoners, we've got drivers transporting celebrities. So the act of driving at those different levels is happening. The question is, are they trained 
for the worst case scenario. Hmm. Now I know, you know, Tony Scotty and Joel Terra and the folks at VDI, they train for the worst case scenario. The government schools that have attended, we all train for the worst case scenario. I don't know if the security companies have the resources or the facilities uh, where they can simulate these kind of actions. And and how many do you do you know uh, you know of the armored car businesses out there? Do they uh, send any of their guys to uh, uh, to Tony's school or or any of the other? You said Tony's is, is is one of the top schools. So do do any of those armored car companies send their guys to any of those top schools? You know, it's a great question. I know that when I was teaching with Joe. And, and for Tony, most of our drivers were, you know, diplomatic, ding cherry protection. Uh, they were driving for CEOs. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them were government. They were getting ready to go overseas. So these are driving skills they would use to defend themselves yeah. on the road. I don't recall there being an armored car uh, driver in the class. Now, that was in my classes. Right. I would say, though, because the vehicles are so different in the way they drive and the way they handle, well, I think that Tony could write a curriculum and, and Joe could put together a syllabus for it. I can't imagine you're going to get a lot of those drivers running a slalom in one of those trucks. Hmm. I mean, they're a pretty unique vehicle. Yeah, yeah. But that's a great question. I would I would refer you to Joe for that. Um, I don't know if you might want to reach out to Wells Fargo or Loomis and ask him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it. it uh, I thought of it because you know it's one of the main themes that we talk about uh, at the IFPO is training, 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 training. Uh, there's you know it's it's a lifelong uh, pursuit when you're a security officer. Uh, you know, no, no matter what your specialty is, uh, you should always right. be striving, to, you know, to uh, always be learning. And so, yeah, I, I, I don't know, just, you know, we, we talk about it so much, but, um, you know. I you, mean, I assume those companies have their own internal driving program, because I can't see them just taking a driver or putting them in an armored car. But a yeah. lot of those companies are using vans now, which are a lot smaller. Mm. And again, uh, I can't see them just for liability issues, not training them in some means. Especially a van, that's a, that's kind of a soft target. Uh, well, it's compared still an, to an armored, armored vehicle. vehicle. I mean, they're lighter, they're smaller, they're faster, uh, but they're still an armored vehicle. Oh, really? Oh, the vans are are as well. They 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 outfit them that way. Oh, okay. They are. Uh, but oh, you're right. still talking about an altered center of gravity. You're still talking about a vehicle whose energy management is going to be different from something that's not armored. Okay. So I'm going I'm to say I will assume these companies are training their drivers. But this to, is to what assumption. capacity, though? You know, to to what level? I guess is is the is then the question. I mean, are they are they up to VDI standards, or or is it is it much is the bar much, much lower? No, I'd say it's much, much lower. I cannot imagine, just from a liability standpoint and a cost standpoint, if you put student drivers in an armored vehicle and you really put them through a training program, mm. that's an awful lot of wear and tear and strain on the vehicles. Mm. Yeah. And you're talking about a vehicle that parts are not to be readily available. I mean, these are armored vehicles. Their suspensions have been altered. They're going to shred tires on any kind of good course. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going to say it's it's probably the basics. Forward, back, left and right. Parking. You know, I can't imagine they're, uh, they're going through cones. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're simulating somebody's chasing them. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. Wow. Well, yeah, uh, just one uh, one heck of a video, and uh, 
it's amazing that that we the public you know have been able to uh to you know to look at the footage and and to look at the both in the in the uh interior and and the exterior you know it's it's um yeah it's really great and um yeah like you said hopefully it'll be used in uh in driving schools in the future um yeah and matt i i want to thank you um thank you so much for uh you know for for being here and and commenting on it, it you know it really means something coming from you you know a guy with with uh a whole heck of a lot of experience well i i you know one i'd like to just say i, I appreciate you reaching out and i'm sorry i don't know more i mean it's only four days ago right and there yes. just hasn't been a lot of data that's come out uh in in the reports not exactly clear yet yeah and um I hate to assume anything hmm. when it comes to, you know, armored car companies here in the States. But uh, I'll tell you what, I'll do a little research on my own and I'll reach out to Joe and see what he knows. And uh, I'll shoot you some background information. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Sounds great, Matt. So if you are out there and if you are interested in uh, executive and dignitary protection, uh, Matt, you've got two websites. Am I am I right? I mean, it, it, they both lead to the ISA to your company, but you've I think you've got uh, eptraining.com. Is that right? Is it .com? Well, it's eptraining.us. .us. Okay. And uh, that's the uh, the academy that we run for training. We do have our own driving program, but we don't allow civilians off the street to attend. Uh, we prefer that you go to VDI or one of the advanced driving schools before you come to us. Ah, okay. Because while they teach you the skills to drive, we put you in scenarios to test the skills. Hmm. Okay. Makes sense. So we're a little bit different when it comes to driving. You've got to know how to drive before you get to us. We're going to just take it to the next step and, and see what your decision-making looks like. Gotcha. But it's, uh, it's eptraining.us. That's the uh, Academy website. And if anyone's uh, interested in what we do or the programs we run, they should always feel free to reach out. Because you can, I mean, you, you talked about experienced individuals, but, but you also have programs for those who are, you know, ready to learn who, who don't have uh, any skills, you know, to begin with. There's, there's a starting at the, the noobs. They're starting at the ground level. All of our dignitary and executive protection courses are, ba we have basic level training. Basic, so if you've right. had no background, we have a program for you. Uh, the only program that we have that we insist you have some previous training is driving. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. But no, uh, dignitary executive protection, uh, we do get a lot of basic and non-skilled students. Uh, they do well because they have no pre, you know, preconceived notions. Mm, right, right. And we We've talked about this them. before. Right. We don't have to break them any bad habits. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because, I mean, you know, nat and naturally, you know, uh, People who have been in the military might uh, transition to executive dignitary protection. Same thing with law enforcement. But as you've said before to me, you know, there's the, there, you run the risk of, of carrying those bad habits with you, you, you know, right. um, whether it's in your mind or, or physically, you know, doing things. Uh, so yeah, so then you, then you have to break it all down, get rid of it, and then create the new, new person. Well, we like to build on what each individual student brings to the class. If they're military or law enforcement, let's take what they know and build on it. Hmm. Now, if you come to us with nothing whatsoever, we're going to give you the foundation and the building blocks. So everyone's going to leave trained, but each student is treated as an individual. So if you're former military, we're going to sit down with you and talk to you. If you're former law enforcement, we'll sit down, we'll talk to you. We'll look at what your past is. And when we look at the curriculum, we'll break teams down. And each team may get slightly different training. 
because we're going to build on what they know. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no cookie cutter. Uh, you can't treat people that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't take somebody off the street with no experience and then treat somebody who might have done protection work in the military for three or four years the same. Right. Understood. So we'll give you the basic foundations and building blocks, but we'll also enhance what you already know. And that's just, you know, that's a shout out to my instructors and to the way the curriculum was written. We're able to do that. Mm -hmm. Great. That's awesome. Well, well, thank you, Matt. Again, uh, appreciate it. This was uh, very eye-opening and, and yeah, hopefully uh, uh, the folks who, who view this will get a lot out of it. Um, you know, I, um, just, yeah, just appreciate it, man. So um, we will- so Again, uh, appreciate you reaching out, Ted, and uh, I hope we talk again soon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thanks again, Matt. Take care.